ulnar nerve tensioning and flossing. So the ulnar nerve is a nerve that originates up in my neck, courses down, then we have some nerves that kind of branch out, and the ulnar nerve runs along the inside or the pinky side of my arm here. So how I really like to set it up is to use a bench and like a squat rack or something that has an adjustable height so that everyone's torso is a little bit different and then doing it with your elbow supported so we can really work on the rotation of the shoulder, the elbow and the wrist to put the, the load into that ulnar nerve. If you don't have any equipment, you can certainly do it standing. We'll talk about that first and then we'll do the seated example here second. So when I'm doing the ulnar nerve, I'm gonna do like the okay sign. And the idea here is I'm trying to rotate, excuse me, I had that backwards there, rotate back up to where I was like holding a plate on my hand. Now, if you're someone that has a ton of tension when we go through and do these te diagnostic testing, maybe this position is where you start. So you're starting with your arm at your side or your elbow bent, you're gonna rotate out, come back, and then hold that plate and come back out of it. Maybe that's too much, then you just simply can kind of go from here. So I'm flexing my wrist, bringing my wrist toward me, wrist away, rotating to the plate is out. And if you are feeling a pull on the, the pinky side of your hand or numbness down into your fingers, don't be as aggressive to try to progress to the next couple setups. So if that doesn't bother you, we're gonna get up into that setup position. And then from here, I like to go arm straight, arm bent, arm straight, arm bent while keeping that wrist extended. And then I'm kind of paying attention, checking to see what my hand is doing. Am I getting any sort of numbness or tingling? Now, if I'm doing a flossing motion, so as my arm comes toward me, I'm gonna bring my head toward the arm and then back. So this would be my flossing motion. If I'm gonna do a tens tensioning motion, my head's gonna go away. As my hand comes toward me, I'm gonna feel more of a pull. You may fold, feel the pull into your ring finger too just the way that the, the ulnar nerve innervates the hand. So again, a pointer finger, thumb come together. We're gonna to rotate back, so holding that plate. And then I can start, excuse me, by doing the, the rotation with holding the plate, the kind of test. And then from there I can go arm straight, arm bent, arm straight, arm bent. And then if I'm adding the flossing, I'm gonna bring my head in and my arm out. That's gonna be the flossing. And if I'm doing the tensioning, I'm gonna bring my head away as my arm comes in. Now what happens if I have limited mobility, limited strength, I can't even hold that position, but I have a ton of nervous tension in my arm. I can do it seated. And the reason I like to do it seated is you can bring your elbow in front of you a little bit easier. And it's easier to keep that elbow on something so the muscles of the shoulder aren't as active, trying to stabilize or hold the arm up. So if I go to this bench here and I prop my elbow up, I can go, uh, ring, or excuse me, pointer finger and thumb together, and then I can rotate that hand around, and then I can just work on doing the flossing from here. And if I don't feel much of a stretch, then I can just rotate my torso away to create more of a wrapping effect through the front of my shoulder here, and then I can come back and try the flossing again. Now, if that's no issue, then I can add or go to the tensioning. So this would be an ulnar nerve tensioner. Right, and the idea here is I'm trying to work my way up to get my arm parallel or slightly par above parallel from the floor to put more load into that nervous system. So typically, we'll depict all that for you in your programming notes. Again, most of the time we'll start with that rotation just to see if it's sensitized. If it's really sensitive, then we'll just stick with that, I'm doing nothing with our neck, and then we'll go to this position, double checking, and then we'll add in the flossing, and then uh, the last step is typically adding in that tensioning. And then you can go back and progress it further by depending on where your arm is relative to your body. If my arm is getting back into extension or horizontal abduction, I'm gonna put more of a wrapping effect in my shoulder, which is gonna create more tension going through that nervous system.